Hi, this is Kent Sanders again with part two of the Evernote, Evernote tutorial. In the first part, we covered some basics of Evernote, what it is and how it's different than Dropbox, uh, as well as how I set up my file folder system. And in part two of this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to actually get items into Evernote. In other words, how do you get your stuff in there and how do you create content in Evernote so that you can have your notes in there. So first of all, uh, before I get into that, I want to mention a couple things. Number one, if you really want to get some more information that's helpful about this topic, you can check out a couple of things. Number one is go to Michael Hyatt's blog. And um, he's a Christian leader. Uh, used to work for Thomas Nelson and was the CEO of that company. And um, writes a lot of great material on his blog. And it's michaelhyatt.com. And it's Michael h-y-a-t-t dot -T com. Hyatt just like the hotel chain. He's got a series of articles on Evernote that you can search for that are extremely helpful. Number two is check out a book called Evernote Essentials written by Brett Kelly and that's spelled just like it sounds. You can do a Google search for that and find it. It's a very helpful document that basically has anything that you would want to know about Evernote. But for now let me give you eight simple ways to get material into Evernote. Number one is you can simply type material into Evernote. So I'm up here. I'm uh, actually going to go to. Let's say I want to create a note in uh, in my worship folder. I want to make a note about uh, something related to worship. I click New Note, and you can set the title Worship Note, and you can type in your text here. It helps to spell correctly. And you can also do lots of things that you could do in Word or some other word processing program. You know, add checklists. You can um, add a graph or a table, rather. You can also insert a document right here. So let's say you want to uh, insert a PDF file. That's really simple. Um, you could go, let's say I want to insert this file. Boom, there it is. Very helpful. And um, that actually keeps the PDF format there, which is very helpful. And then also you can record a voice note here if you wanted to. So I could click record and it would record it. And you can see it's recording now. And I could save it and there it is. And the way that it saves it in a Evernote note is it saves it as this WAV file here. So that's very, very helpful. Now you can use the desktop application. You can also type in things from uh, from an app on a phone or an iPad or anything like that. It works exactly the same way. In fact, I would say the I would I actually prefer using the iPad and iPhone apps rather than the desktop version of Evernote. I think they're set up in a very great way. So, so number one is you can just type in things into Evernote. That's a very handy way. Number two is you can email your items to Evernote. So let's say that I would that I get an email. Let's go to my email program here on Outlook. Uh, this is a series of things that I have that go directly into my reading folder. So let's say um, here is a faculty focus article. Or let's say here's an acoustic guitar email and for some reason I would like to keep this. So all that you have to do is forward it to your Evernote email address and whenever you register with Evernote it assigns you a unique email address and so on here all I have to do is type in KEN first three letters of my first name and my email address pops up there and then what you do this is very important in the subject line it doesn't matter what else is there but after that you have to put at and then designate a folder for it to go into so let's say that I want this to go into my guitar folder I type in GTR because that's uh, the name of my guitar folder and then you can also put a hashtag in there and this creates a tag for it so let's say I want to call this um, what's this email about uh, homespun video instruction okay and I'm gonna title this homespun or I'm gonna tag this homespun send that off and let's take a look at Evernote here and see what happens Let's go to my guitar uh, folder, which would be right here. And let's sync this. Okay, 
Okay, and that email should show up here in just a second. Okay, so you can see now that uh, that email is here in my guitar folder, and uh, that works really, really well. The third way that you can get material into Evernote is that you can scan items in there. And I actually use three different ways to scan items in here. Let me, uh, let me make a note here just to so you can kind of see this. Number one is I use uh, school copiers. We have a couple of nice copiers at, this, at the college and I have those set up to where I just I can scan in a pile of documents. Of course it's all going to come across as one PDF file uh, or just a single page if I want to and that is set up on the copier to go directly to my imports folder on my Evernote email address. And this, so that's really really nice. Uh, secondly, I use a Fu. Uh, let me see if I can spell it. Fujitsu Scan Snap, and that is a wonderful, wonderful scanner. It's a color scanner. Scanner. It scans. It's really fast. It does about 40 to 50 pages at a time, or something like that. And uh, it's a great tool. And you can set that up to where it scans directly into Evernote. It's great. And the third, I use an HP uh, printer scanner at home. And, uh, you know, it's just okay. The scanner is really, really slow, even though it has an auto document feeder and scans front and back and all that. Uh, it's really not too great of a piece of equipment. So I wouldn't recommend that. If I was going to do it again, I would buy a scan snap for my home and I would get a cheap HP printer or some other kind of printer. So, okay. Enough about that. Uh, and by the way, I also have the HP printer set up to scan directly into my imports folder in Evernote on my desktop computer. Um, however, I will say that the HP scanner and printer was extremely difficult to set up. It was very confusing and complicated and convoluted. And so I wouldn't recommend that at all. The fourth way that you can uh, get things into Evernote is you can cut and paste. And this is as simple as it sounds. Let's say, um, Let's go here to a file. Let's go to uh, Dropbox and um, go to Chapel here. I'll open up. Uh, sorry, let me go to a different document. Let's go to this and I'll open up. Uh, you can you can copy basically any kind of file. I'll copy this file and. Let me say I'm going to make a new note. You can just copy and paste it right into Evernote. Same thing works with text. Open up this document here. And let's say I want to copy that. Copy and paste. Works wonderfully. Very, very simple. The next way that you can get material into Evernote. This is uh, the fifth way, I believe, is you can drag files into Evernote. So let's say I just want to drag something in here. Let's go to, uh, can I go to Dropbox? And uh, let's say I want to get this in here. You can just drag this file over. And it may take a second for that to work. At least it's supposed to work. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. And so what that does is that does not actually change locations. It, it actually copies the file when you put it in an Evernote note, which is kind of nice. So that way you don't lose track of it. It just duplicates the note in there. So pretty simple. Let's get rid of that. Okay, the um, Sixth way that you can get material into Evernote, and this is one of the neatest ways, is you can use a web clipper. Okay, let me go to the web. Uh, this is the program I'm using to make this video, by the way, Screencast-O-Matic. It's very uh, easy. So let's say um, I'm going to go to uh, Bible Gateway, and that I want to, want to copy something in here. Okay, what you can do is you have to install this extension. I'm using the Chrome browser. I'm installed install this extension available from Evernote called the Evernote Web Clipper. 
And so you just highlight whatever it is that you want to want to copy, and then you clip it. You hit that button, and this will show up. The title of it is there, and this is the folder that it goes into. So let's say I want to put this in uh, again in the guitar folder, and you can add tags such as um, uh, scripture or whatever, however you want to tag it. You can add comments, etc. And then clip the selection. Okay, and if we go over here, to, okay, this tells you that it's been clipped. If we go over here to Evernote in the guitar, in the uh, guitar folder, let's see if it shows up here. Sometimes it does take a little bit for it to show up. Uh, somehow I've got a sync issue here. I don't know what that's about. And there you go just as I clipped it. So pretty neat deal there. And you can clip lots of different things from the web. That's very helpful. Um, the seventh way that you can get material into Evernote is you can, let's get rid of this, you can record an audio note. Right, let's just do this. And if you're using the desktop application, you can uh, use this. Very simple. What I use it for much, much more is is I actually use the app on my iPhone. For instance, when I'm driving or if there's some situation where I want to get something down in a file and I can't write it physically right then or text it or something, then I'll just pop up the Evernote app and create a new note and then audio record it. For instance, let me show you a couple of things that I recorded uh, recently. So let's go to, in the SLCC folder, let's go to Worship Program. And um, let's view the files. Let's do a snippet view. Nope, oh, I'm sorry. Let's do thumbnail view. And okay, here we go. There's some projects, maybe we'll get to in lab week over here. So let's, um, let me look down through here. Okay, here is a note that I made uh, a while back on the structure of a larger worship program. Uh, some ideas there. This is an untitled audio note. I have no idea what this was about, um, but I made it uh, apparently a little while back. Uh, I don't know what it's about exactly, but um, I could listen to it and title it if I wanted to. So the point is, is that it's there in an audio file if I want to use it that way. So uh, let me give you another example. I'll go to my uh, personal file here and personal growth. Let's see what's in here. These are some notes that I made the other day. I was listening to uh, Tony Robbins' uh, audio teaching and had some good things that I wanted to, to record while I was thinking about them. And so what it does instead of uh, creating an untitled note here, a new feature on this is that it, it lists where you recorded it from. So I was driving on Highway 370 uh, into work that day or from work. Um, looks like I was coming into work and it recorded where it was. I don't know really why that's helpful because I don't need to know where a note was recorded but it's just a feature that it has. So that's very helpful. Uh, then the last way that you can get material into Evernote is through a picture. For instance, um, here's a picture that I took. Uh, this is just something I wrote one time. I scratched out some notes um, just some life values that I have and just to kind of while I was thinking about it, I wanted to scratch those out and I just took a picture of it. That's very helpful. Um, and I'll talk in the next tutorial about the search feature but the way that I use the, um, the picture feature on this is I will take, you can take a picture with your camera obviously or something else and send it to Evernote but what I use most of all much more than any other feature as far as pictures go is I will use the app on my phone and create a new note in Evernote and then snap a picture through that note. And then that picture is actually searchable if it has text. But we'll get into, into that into the next, in the next tutorial. But anyway, those are several ways that you can get material into Evernote. Typing, emailing, scanning, cut and pasting, dragging files, using the web clipper, audio recording, and taking a picture. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next tutorial.